you know, I'm still a virgin. <laughs> oh, yeah! <he laughs> Do you remember he that? He did say that! Yeah. So that's a good example yeah. of the kind of conversation <laughs> you might have on the bus in the States. Hey guys, I'm Eric. And I'm Grace. We're the Wandering Ravens. We're a couple of digital nomads who have been wandering around the world for over three years, and we make videos about travel and culture. If either of those topics interests you, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon so that you can be notified every time we release a new video. Today we are going to be talking about British and American etiquette and comparing some of the differences between those two things. And just so you guys know where we're coming from, Grace and I are both from Seattle, Washington. So we represent Northwest American etiquette. And our UK exposure has been to Central and Southern England. So that's the kind of etiquette that we're gonna be talking about today. Are you ready? Yes, let's do this. First up, Honesty. So where we're from in the States, people are very direct and forthcoming about how they feel. They will be like, hey, here's an issue that I have and here's what you can do to kind of make it better. They're very straightforward. They won't really leave you guessing what the problem is. Like if there's a problem in your relationship or something like that, your friendship, or if you've said something to offend them, they will let you know. They don't beat around the bush. Yeah, no beating around the bush. In contrast to this, we notice that in the UK, Brits like to conceal their motives behind a bulwark of sarcasm, mm. from behind which they can take the piss. Overall, it felt like motive there is implied rather than directly stated. It can leave you feeling a little bit anxious, like, oh no, did I do something wrong? And if so, mm. what on earth could it be? because we're used to that forthcomingness just being like, yeah. you know what, you did this, I have an issue with that, fix it. Yeah, a practical problem that we've run into is that when Brits invite us to do things, we take them up on it. And mm -hmm. while it may not seem like a problem, what we've realized is that in the UK, a lot of people, I, I don't know if they just invite out of politeness, mm -hmm. you know? Like it's like, oh, you're in the area. Let's get together, you can come over. Us, being Americans, we're like, yeah, we'll be there at 6 p.m. sharp. Boom. But then, in retrospect, we've had moments where we've gone, you know, that invitation, I, I don't actually know if that was a genuine invitation or if they were just, you know, being polite. Mm -hmm. so. so you can tell us, mm -hmm. what is your experience? If a Brit invites you to do something, is it a genuine invitation? Do they actually want you to say, yes, I will definitely do that? Or is it more of just like, Politeness thing. How do we tell what's polite and what's genuine? Hosting company. In the States, when someone comes over to your house, they come in, they sit down, and you can either get them coffee immediately, or it's all right to kind of wait until the proper time, mm. like, you know, we've been visiting, and hey, you feel like some tea or coffee right about now? Whereas we noticed in the UK, whenever we went to someone's house, tea was, you know, number one priority. You haven't even got your coat off and they're like, what kind of tea can I get you? Mm -hmm. And another thing too is that once that first tea is gone, they're on it with a second cup of tea and a third cup of tea. There's just... So you know. much tea. Mm -hmm. Although I don't know if they would ask you what kind of tea you want because well, it's true. always just the standard English breakfast tea. Yeah, like black tea. Yeah, black tea. Yeah. Cream, sugar, yeah. Yeah, that kind of stuff. It was very sweet. The, both the tea and the people. Yes. <laughs> Another hosting difference that we noticed is that in the States, people tend to conceal alcoholic beverages unless they know that the people coming to their home drink. The, the culture surrounding alcohol in America is quite a bit different than it is in the UK. And so it's kind of seen as something more private. So if someone's coming to your house in America, you will often put away any amount of booze that you have in your house so that it's not out in plain sight when guests yeah. arrive. Whereas in the UK, people have cabinets or cupboards that are just full of different kinds of alcohol. And if you come to their house, they're a lot more likely to be like, I have this type of sherry or something that is very old or from this region in the country. Do you want to try some? So it's a lot more just like they have designated area for all of their alcohol and it is in plain sight and they will offer it to you to try out different things. 
So that is definitely different. Please and thank you. Both countries emphasize saying please and thank you a lot. Mm -hmm. Although I think that they might do it slightly more in England. Yeah, while in the States we do say please and it's really emphasized when you're a kid, like always say please and thank you, mm -hmm. always say please and thank you. And if you ask for something, can I have? Your mom's gonna be like, what do you what's say? What's the magic word? Yeah, what's the magic word? You better say please. But we noticed that a common phrase in the UK was, please may I have. So if you're ordering a coffee or you're at a cafe, a Brit would be reading off the menu, and, please may I have such and this. Such. Mm -hmm. Which to us did sound like a little bit excessive. How it would be perceived in the States would definitely be not like, oh, oh that person's right. super polite and just be like, hmm, that's like, kind of a weird know, way to ask for yeah, something. Do you, do you actually want that or not? Because in the States when you're ordering, what you say is just, hi, I'll have blank, mm -hmm. Or I'd like, you. can I'd I get? Like, yeah. Where the politeness comes in is in the thank you. We say thank you up the wazoo. Can I have this? Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a million. Thanks mm -hmm. so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks you again. Thanks a bunch. Thanks yeah. a bunch. So usually you order something and then you say thank you about a thousand times mm -hmm. afterwards. So less please, more thank you in the States, mm -hmm. whereas lots of please and thank you in the UK. Gift giving. In the States, when you go to someone's house for the first time, it is considered customary to bring a gift, but there's not really a set gift. Like here in France, there's like a list of things that you're supposed to take. Yeah. But in the States, it's like, whatever. You can take a bottle of wine if you know that they drink. You can take flowers, chocolate, cookies. Often in the States though, you can skip the whole gift giving thing if you're going to someone's house. If you are sharing a meal with that person, they will often tell you, could you please bring this or that to go with dinner? And if they ask you to bring something and you bring it, that kind of counts as your gift. What is gift giving like in the UK? Mm -hmm. When you're invited to someone's house, are you supposed to bring a gift? Or only if it's the first time or every single time? Are there appropriate gifts? Are there gifts that you shouldn't bring? Let us know. Yeah, we're going back to the UK in just one month. So we need to have this down so that we know what kind of gifts to bring people. Interacting with strangers. First, we're gonna start off with on the street. So in the States, specifically where we're from, if you pass someone on the street, you walk by someone, you smile, you nod, you say good morning, how's it going, that sort of thing. It's very friendly interaction with people on the street. In England, we noticed that the farther north we went, the friendlier people got with you when they passed mm -hmm. you like on the street like they would say good morning they would smile they would nod whereas like in london that doesn't really happen i don't think that you would acknowledge someone in passing on the street mm -hmm. in london at all all right now we're going to talk about on the metro or public transportation so in the u.s it's not uncommon to talk with other people who are on the metro with you even if like you don't know each other at all which is usually the case you will start a conversation with them like, hi, how's it going? Where are you going today? What are you up to? What are your mm -hmm. plans? You'll just chat with people <laughs> on the metro or on the bus, and that is perfectly normal. An example of this, we went back to the States to visit last year, and we rode the bus once while we were there, and on that single bus ride, we had like two or three people strike up conversations with us mm -hmm. immediately. Like they'd get on the bus, come sit down, and how are you doing? Where are you going? Wow, you guys. You know, he's such a cute You're couple. You're so cute. Let me yeah. tell you all about my diabetes. Yeah. That was actually that was actually the conversation we had. That gentleman actually took um, the conversation really far. A little like, bit too far. A little bit. Yeah, he was like, you know, I'm still a virgin. <laughs> oh yeah. He, Do you remember he that? He did say that. Yeah. And he went on and on about how lucky we were that we had each other in a loving relationship mm -hmm. and how that was like a good thing because. You know, after all, he was still a virgin because he didn't, he hadn't found that person yet, but we were really lucky to have found each other and yeah. really sweet to be not virgins anymore. <laughs> it was so awkward. So that's a good example yeah. of uh, the kind of conversation <laughs> you might have on the bus in the States. In the UK, you do not really strike up a conversation with people on public transportation. Mm -hmm. It's a lot quieter. You just kind of stick to yourself on your phone, read a book, whatever, but you don't really talk with people or make conversation. I feel like that would be kind of weird. Another kind of situation where you'll be interacting with strangers is in customer service. So cashiers when you're at the grocery store or wait staff at a restaurant. And in the UK, we notice that the etiquette around that is very polite. They're very friendly. You know, hi, y'all right? 
and then get you your food, serve you, very, you know, smiles. But in the States, it goes much further in the terms of conversation, at least. As a server, I worked at a restaurant for about six years, waiting tables. And in that job, it was expected of me to make conversation with the tables. And in fact, the more conversation you make, the better your tips become. Mm -hmm. So the more information I can tell a table about myself, and the more information I get back from them, mm -hmm. the statistically, the better tips are. So Americans like that. Yeah. So you come out to eat at my restaurant, you sit down, I actually get down on my knees, put my elbow up on the table, and I'm like, hey, how are you doing today? Is this your first time in the area? Do you need some like tips on what to do here? What's mm -hmm. going on? Are you in school? Yeah. yeah. You ask them a lot about themselves, but then you also volunteer a lot of information. Mm -hmm. So I know for us, when we were getting ready to move overseas to Korea, that's something we told all of our tables. And they were like, yeah. oh, you guys are traveling. That's so cool. I know before we got engaged, you would tell tables like, All oh, the there's this girl I'm gonna propose to pretty soon. Saving up for a ring. Yeah, and that got, that did That well. actually worked. <laughs> yeah, I got really good tips with that story. At least it was true though. It was true, yeah, yeah it was. Personally, I kind of like it better in the UK. I don't mm -hmm. go out to eat to be Bar yeah, to make a bar friend. Barbated? How do you say it? Bar 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 bombarded. Bombarded! Barbated! <laughs> <laughs> what the f was that? Barbated. I was like, barbated? Bombarded. Bombarded. Oh my goodness. I can't even speak. Speaking in tongues now here. It is Sunday after all. <laughs> Holla. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so hot in here. <laughs> all right. Keep it going. Keep it going. Okay. Personally, I actually prefer customer service in the UK because mm -hmm. when I go out to eat, I don't go out to eat to be bombarded with questions by wait staff or anything like that. <laughs> you almost <laughs> laughed again. Uh -huh. Stop. I don't. Yeah. I would prefer the waiter or waitress to just give me my food, to just take my order, and other than that, to not be there at all. Turning the question over to you, what level of service do you like? When you go out to eat, do you want a server that asks you questions and is your friend, or do you just want that, what can I get you today, level of service? Drop your comments down below. Queuing. The difference here is that in the UK, you queue, while in the US, you stand in line. In both places, cutting is bad, but in England, you might be able to get away with it because no one will actually speak up and correct you. Or is that the case? Brits, would you confront someone if they cut you in line? Wait, do you say cut in line or cut in queue? Oh boy, yeah, what did because say? Cut we, we say stand oh, they in say line. Jump the queue. Jump the queue. I think. Jump the queue? That sounds like... I've heard that. Okay. Whatever, if somebody <laughs> was behind you and then suddenly they ended up in front of you, would you say something? Or would you just... <clears throat> internally, you're killing them with your eyes, but you're gonna let them do it. Yeah. Jostling and apologies. Hmm. So in the US, if you accidentally bump someone, <laughs> you will always apologize Sorry. profusely. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it's similar in the UK. So if, if you accidentally jostle or bump someone, you yeah. will apologize to them. Otherwise, it's very rude and it, it's seen as you did that on purpose sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So like if you, if you, okay, if there's someone walking in front of you and you pass them and you accidentally bump them and you don't apologize, that's kind of your way of saying you are walking too slow, pick it up, mate. Like, yeah. Pick up your pace. Tipping. In the Northwest of the United States, it is polite to tip 10% if service is bad, 15% if it's good, 20% if it's great, and 100% if it's New Year's or Christmas, something like that. Mm -hmm. That's actually true. People will tip you way more around the holidays. Yeah, as a server, you want to work those holiday shifts mm -hmm. because you're gonna make bank. Whereas in the UK, tipping seems to be a lot more confusing based on the comments we've gotten on some of our other videos. Some people say, you don't have to tip at all. Other people say, 10% is customary. Other people say, 20%. Oh, well, but, yeah, well, case it ranges. in point. There was yeah. 5%, there was 10%, there was 20%, there was no tipping at all. There was yeah. tipping is actually rude. And so, oh yeah, someone yeah. said that tipping, tipping is actually, is actually an insult because it's, it's telling someone they're a prostitute in the UK. So you guys let us know, yeah. out of all these, which one is correct? Hugging. In the States, we hug friends, we hug family, we don't hug at work, but we are able to hug coworkers at work parties or things like that, just not in the workplace. Mm -hmm. In the UK, what is affection among friends and family like? Will you hug friends and family? Is hugging common? Is that just like... 
What's it like? Kissing! We're not talking about between romantic couples. This is between friends and family. In the States, there is kissing between close family members, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. parents and children, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. but it is very rare. Uh, kissing between friends, you know, no. almost unheard no. of, at least in our, our corner of the United States. In the UK, I've heard that you guys do a bit more, you know, peck on the cheek type of stuff when you're greeting, but we never saw it. So you can tell us, mm -hmm. who do you kiss and when? Next up we have table manners. Silverware. So as we discussed in our 101 differences between the UK and the USA video, which you can watch here, in the US we do this really weird thing where we eat with our right hand, nom, 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 and then when it's time to cut something, we switch hands, we put the fork in our left hand, we pick up our knife with our right hand, we cut it, then we set the knife down, switch the fork back over, and continue eating with our right hand. And that drives Brits crazy. And it also drives us crazy now because, you know, it's way more efficient to do it the way you guys do, where you keep the fork in the left hand, knife in the right hand. This is just makes way more sense, and we agree with that. But after making that last video, I was like, there's got to be a reason why Americans do it the way they do. So I went on a quest to discover the answer for this, and I found it for you guys in a book by Bill Bryson called Made in America. And the reason why Americans prefer to eat with the right hand is because way back in the day, when the fork was first invented, it came to England first, but then took a long time for it to make its way over to the States. And during that time of no fork, Americans were over there eating with a knife. And so what we would do in the States, we just had a knife basically, you know, we'd cut something, stab it, and then eat it. And we had special knives that had prongs on the end, kind of like a fork, but also a knife. So you can cut, stab, and eat all with the right hand. Mm -hmm. And then when the fork eventually showed up, we just continued to prefer to use the right hand for eating. So mm -hmm. that's just a tradition that has persisted all the way until today. So, and rendered yeah. all Americans useless with their left hand. Yeah. Because they we, still have to do all of the transferring. We don't know what to do with this. <laughs> when we're eating, it doesn't, it doesn't, yeah. It doesn't yeah, matter. you just keep it in your lap, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Another table manner difference between the States and the UK as a result of this is that in the States, what people do is they'll, you know, knife in the right hand and we'll pre cut. If we have a piece of steak or something, mm -hmm. we'll cut, you know, four or five bites, mm -hmm. set the knife down, and then knife, you know, fork in the right hand, eat our way through those pre-cut bites. And then we switch back, pick the knife back up, and cut more. Whereas in the UK, what I've noticed is you guys don't pre-cut food. You cut and you eat that bite, and then you cut the next one and you eat that. So if that's accurate, let me know. Other table manners that we do in the States include don't put your elbows on the table, chew with your mouth closed, don't talk with your mouth full, eat as quietly as possible. Mm -hmm. No smacking your lips or anything like that. Yeah. What are table manners like in the UK? I'm really curious. Do you have the like no elbows on the table sort of rule? I remember that's something your parents always get after you for when you're a kid. Yeah. They're like, get your elbows off the table. Is that similar in the UK? What are your table manners? Are there more? I'd love to hear if there's more. Pleasantries. A pleasantries difference that we noticed was that in the States where we say, how's it going? What's up? That sort of thing. You guys in the UK say, you all right? Also in the States, when we're talking to strangers, addressing a group or a person, we might say, hey guys, what's up guys? But in the UK, you guys use a lot of affectionate terms like love or duck stuff like that that we I've never heard someone use duck before yeah. that's funny <laughs> in the american south terms like that are common for strangers but in the north and in the northwest where we are you would never call a stranger love or anything other than sir oh, or yeah. ma'am sir or ma'am yeah do you guys use that in the uk or would that just be totally weird to refer to someone as sir or ma'am yeah, like as a server at a restaurant, mm -hmm. whenever someone sat down, I'd say, Hello, sir, what can I get for you today, ma'am? Topics for conversation. In the USA, it's taboo to talk about money, politics, or religion, unless you're conversing with someone 
with whom you already know where they stand, mm -hmm. or you've already talked about this stuff before. So if, you know, if I'm making conversation with strangers on the bus, it would be rude of me to be like, yo, what church do you go to? Or who'd you vote for in the last election? Yeah, you never ask who someone voted for. That's like that, almost yeah, an invasion that's... of privacy. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally true. Mm -hmm. Of course, once you establish a friendship with a person, you figure out where they stand on certain issues, then these topics open up for conversation, mm -hmm. except for money. I don't think you ever talk with anyone about how much no, they make. No, you, you really never do. You don't talk no. about how much they make or uh, whether or not they're, they have like savings or retirement mm -hmm. or whether or not they have debt. Yeah. It's just kind of like, just don't, don't go there ever. Which is bad because it's resulted in a lot of Americans not really knowing mm -hmm. Very, healthy, yeah. you know, how to, healthy finances, how to balance a budget and all that sort of thing. So we do need to change that in the States to where talking about money is an open conversation so that people can not go into debt and stuff like that. But in the UK, we notice that when you meet someone or when you're talking with strangers, these topics are ripe for conversation. So I'm gonna tell the funny story. I have a funny story too. Okay. But you can tell yours first. It's, I was gonna say the Trump one. Oh yeah, yeah, go, go for the Trump one. So, for example, we went to a cafe in, in the UK, we sat down and the gal came over and we got talking a little bit, you know, just pleasantries, we're visiting from the States. And of course, as co every conversation seems to do when we're in the UK, the, the topic turned to Donald Trump and she was like, you know, you might not know this, but here in the UK, it's perfectly legal to off Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Which is a sentence that surprised me because one, she didn't know where we stood on the issue, and yeah. then she just like it was like, you know, we're within the first thirty seconds of conversation, mm -hmm. and she's gone right to the jugular of yes. political discourse. And second, it was just very you know strong language about a political figure, which mm -hmm. I, again in the U.S. you would never get to that level of conversation with a stranger. Oh yes, on that note, I do have another story as well about conversations that Brits mm. are quick to have with strangers that wouldn't really happen in the States. So we were in a church and we had just met a gentleman. He started talking about religion right away and he was saying how it was humorous, how I don't remember who it was, but it was like a group of people that were religious and believed in God. And he was just saying kind of like how, you know, they still believed in God even after, you know, we've come so far, like scientifically, all these different things. So he didn't know our religious standing, whether or not we believed in God or which God or anything like that. And we were in a church when this conversation happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah, again, that's another conversation which you wouldn't have in the States. And I should say a uh, quick disclaimer about the conversation <laughs> we mentioned earlier about virginity with a gentleman on the bus. <clears throat> That is not a normal conversation. You know, a, you'll have a million conversations in these states before you have that conversation. Yeah. He was a very unique and special American. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was just a funny story. But he was, he was a character. There, there are definitely there are those. characters. Yes. Yes, but overall, in the states, you don't talk about virginity on buses. Yes, <laughs> or religion or politics or whatever. Question for you: In the UK, are there any topics which are inappropriate for conversation? Make sure to leave those down below so that we don't accidentally talk about those on our next visit. Our overall thoughts on etiquette in the US versus the UK. Overall, we did get the impression that in the UK, manners matter a lot more than they do in the US. So I think that it's true, the saying, manners maketh man, I think that's a popular saying in the UK, that is very evident in UK culture. Whereas in the US, we really value, as a nation, we value informality. And so manners are important, like don't chew with your mouth open. But beyond that, there's there's a lot of wiggle room. America is extremely individualistic, and I think mm -hmm. this is kind of reflected in the area of etiquette. You might have been raised in any number of subcultures within America that have mm -hmm. their own considerations of what's polite, what's impolite, and stuff like that. And so I think there's a lot of gray area when it yeah. comes to etiquette in the States. In the UK, there's here's what's polite, and here's what's rude. And that's very standard. Mm -hmm. But in the States, you know, you have this, you know, here's what's polite and they're very general, like mm -hmm. say please and thank you when you can. But because of we are a melting pot of cultures, mm -hmm. I feel that there is a lot of leeway in terms of what's considered rude. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. I think the best position to have when it comes to manners is to view them as, you know, a social lubricant. So mm -hmm. whatever society you're in, 
adapt to those manners and those become your new manners. The worst thing you can do as a traveler is take your manners from your culture and take them to another culture and try to impose them. And this is the thing that drives us crazy. You have this stereotypical American tourist that's out there and they're yelling at the local people in English. It was like, if I just speak louder and slower, maybe this person will magically stop speaking mm. Japanese or Korean and learn to speak English. And we hate those people. They make us excruciatingly mad. There's also Brits that we've encountered that have been incredibly rude and annoying in other cultures. For example, this gentleman we met in Japan who would not stop going on and on about how the Japanese manners and Japanese etiquette was uncivilized and the not proper way to do things. Mm -hmm. And he was continually going around and proudly correcting his, his, words, his words, his words, correcting the Japanese people of like, stop, here's what you're doing, here's why it's wrong, and here's why you need to do it the British way. Mm -hmm. And that was horrible. Oh. Yeah, it was horrible. And of course, we know not all British people are that way. And we know not all Americans are the loud, annoying tourists. We're loud on YouTube when we're out on the street, we're not like this. This this is an internet personality going on right now. We are silent as doves. And we promise. You we guys promise. would like us in real life. My takeaway here is don't slag off the local culture. You know, try to adapt. I'm talking to you Americans that are loud and you Brits that are rude. And now we're gonna turn the conversation over to you. What are some of the etiquette and manner differences between the United States and the UK that you have noticed? Drop your answers down below and let's have a fun conversation about it. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. That actually does a huge favor to us and helps the YouTube algorithm promote this video around the interwebs. And make sure that you also subscribe and hit the mm -hmm. little bell icon so that you can be notified every time we release a new video about travel or culture. Again, I'm Eric. I'm Grace. We're the Wandering Ravens, and we'll see you guys next time.